Hello brethren, you are welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Brother Azana David. We have been following a series on salvation of men, especially how God secures the souls of men. Today we want to talk about how far God goes to secure our souls. How far? How much effort has God actually put into the security of the souls of men? And how far is he going? And how far can he really go? This is what we want to talk about today. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we are limited in our knowledge, especially the knowledge of the truth. Even the truth we know, there are lots of things that fight against it, against the knowledge of your word. This is why we need to study to show ourselves approved. Lord, speak to us. May your spirit touch the areas of our hearts that have never been touched before. Touch us and draw us. Help us to understand your word in full give us assurance that you are with us and that in all things you will always be there for us may your word cause a divine healing heal every part of our body every joint that is weak let them receive divine touch divine healing in the name of jesus christ may your word touch every part of our lives and may your word revive us again in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Please share this video to all your contacts on WhatsApp, on Facebook, also on YouTube. And also, if you have not subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe. And those of you who have not been supporting us, please support us. Those of you who have been supporting us financially, we pray that Lord God Almighty will bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go into the message of today. The topic is how far God goes to secure our souls. How far God goes to secure our souls. And I don't just want to go right into talking about how far God goes in securing our souls but i also want us to understand some things about god's plans for the salvation of men how many of us are aware that even before the foundation of the world was laid god already has a plan yes god had a plan god is omniscient he knows the beginning in the beginning that has no beginning he already knew what would happen and he already made advanced preparation for the salvation of man's soul we will come to that jesus christ is slain from the foundation of the world is that not shocking Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. God already made all preparation for the salvation of man's soul. So let's look at some Bible verses as we journey through. This is a journey, please pay a very keen attention. Because if you miss out, you may not be able to connect the dots. It is a journey. Let's look at the test for today. John six thirty seven to 40 All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which had sent me, that of all which he had given me, I shall lose nothing, but 
should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Praise God. I want us to analyze these verses here. Remember the topic we're talking about today is how far God goes to secure our souls. How far, to what extent can he go? Look at the words of Jesus Christ. The first statement here is that all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. That means all those that go to Jesus are actually given to him by the Father. Remember what Jesus Christ said that no one comes to me except the Father draws him. So first the Father draws you to Jesus Christ. A lot of people think that we hear the gospel by mistake. It is not by mistake. Everything is conscientiously planned by God. God plans everything. Remember, we are predestined. The doctrine of predestination is very, very correct. Although some people add heretic teachings to it. But the truth is that even before we were born, we have been selected. We have been enmarked for salvation. So God draws us. When the Son of Man is lifted up, God will draw all men to himself. God draws us to himself. That is how far we can go. God gives us to Jesus Christ. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch. God sent his servant to him. He was already in motion. He was traveling. And then God sent his servant to him. That is how the gospel came to Africa. At a very early stage. If you look at the story, you will see that it was God who intentionally drove the message of salvation to Africa, opened the eyes of the Ethiopian eunuch, and he brought the gospel to Africa. Nothing happens by mistake, even you yourself. It was God's own arrangement that you become saved. Even after we are saved and we die, God doesn't forget about us. The plan is that even our bodies that are dead, that are buried, decayed, even the bones that are shattered, will also be raised by Jesus Christ. That is how far God goes about our salvation. And he said, And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He doesn't cast us out. You may come to him with your loads of addictions, with your loads of sins, with bodily infirmity, your body smelling, and with different kind of bad characters, he will not cast you out because you have bad characters, because you have addiction, because you have uh, sicknesses all over your body. Jesus will never cast you out. People may be covering their nose because you are smelling, but Jesus will not cast you out because you are smelling. Jesus will never cast you out because you have demons. No. Whosoever goes to him, he will in no wise cast out. This is how far God goes. To make sure that your soul is saved and your soul is secured. He said, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which had sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing. 
It is not the will of God that you should get lust. It is not the will of God that you should be missing on the last day. So God does everything possible to make sure that you are secured and that you are saved and that nothing happens to you. A lot of people think that when they are saved, they are left alone to begin to fight for their own salvation and begin to uh, do everything possible without the help of God and without the support of the Holy Spirit. Forgetting that by strength no man prevails. If you are left alone, you will never make it. God goes to lens to make sure that we are safe, to make sure that we do not lose our salvation. Let me tell you something. Do you know that Cain, the first man that God cursed directly, if you look at the curse, the punishment of Adam and Eve, there was no direct curse upon man. God did not say, you are cursed. No. God cursed the serpent. But God did not actually curse the man directly. When it came to the time of Cain, God brought upon him direct punishment. Why am I talking about Cain? It is because Cain committed a very heinous crime. He killed his brother Abel and not because he killed Abel but because Cain had the opportunity to be safe but he was so overtaken by his evil plots. So when God punished him God did not just punish him the way he punished Adam and Eve. He cursed him directly. Why? Because God did everything possible to make sure that his soul is secured. To save his soul. A lot of times, this is what God does. God makes sure he does everything to make sure that we are saved. To make sure that the security of the believer is not played with. But men, most times, decides to do what is in his mind. The truth is that the heart of man is so hardened. Man is so self-willed. Man is so hardened in his heart. That even when God is doing everything possible to make sure that man is secured, man is saved, man is sealed beyond every kind of uh, satanic attacks that is capable of pulling him away from his hand. Because man has this uh, will, man is a rational being. Man is a rational being, he can make decisions for himself because man is so bent on doing his own will, he throws out God's own plans. Man is the only one that can break down the fence of God, the protection of God, because he has his own will. Man can choose to follow God or follow the devil. I remember some time ago, God sent me to a woman. So I went, I believe that God actually wants me to talk to this woman so that I can learn. So I went to her, she was over 80 years old. I went to this woman and talked to this woman and she agreed to repent. But after that moment, this woman turned her back against God. 
This is a woman that used to have dreadlocks all her life. She was a gift the mother got when she went to a shrine to look for the fruit of the womb. And this woman never went to church. She lived all her life serving the devil. So in an old age, even when of the children became a bishop, they put a lot of pressure on her to go to church, give her life to Christ. So this woman reluctantly agreed to serve God. And when I went to her, she was at the point of, okay, should I continue to follow God or do the will of the devil? So I went to her, talked to her. She told me she couldn't sleep because demons were coming after her. Even before I went to her, I was attacked. I was attacked and I got a very serious warning from the deity that was in charge of this woman's life. I was already in the theological college, so I went to a farm to clear a farm for my mom. So that Saturday, as I was resting, I fell into a trance-like, uh, I don't know if it was a, a vision or a life, but I saw that I couldn't raise my hand, I couldn't raise my leg. That was around 2009. I couldn't raise my leg, I couldn't raise my head, and then I felt the presence of this demonic being who was talking to me. And he said, this woman belongs to me. Don't dare go there. Don't you ever go there to preach to her, not to talk to her. I was hearing the voice. It was like life or vision. My eyes were open. And then when the deity left, I said, I was angry. I said, I must go. For the fact that I got this warning, I am going there. So I went. I talked to her. She agreed to follow Jesus Christ. And then I went home. After I prayed with her, I tried to do a follow-up. And then I went back to her a few days later, and she said, Men of God, don't pray. I don't want to follow God again. I'm ready for the consequences. I can't sleep. I told her, you are old already. Why don't you just bear the pains and follow Jesus Christ? She told me, as a matter of fact, I want to offer sacrifice to the, the deity. I have been serving this deity all my life, and I'm ready to surrender. I was so sad. She couldn't even allow me to pray. That evening, I couldn't even eat when I got to my hostel. I couldn't eat. I was so sad. And then the Lord spoke to me. He told me that, you see this woman I had in her heart. I have done everything possible to make sure that she repents, but she refused to repent. I sent a lot of people to her to save her soul, but she refused. And then there was something the Lord told me. The Lord told me that it made me to fear God. The Lord told me that I sent a lot of people to this woman, but she had in her heart. And that she lived her life as if God never exists. And that she has sent many to hell. She destroyed a lot of people. And I have resolved that this woman must perish in hell. After I heard that, I was consoled. But I was still sad because his soul is going to eternal destruction. 
A lot of people may say, why is it that God cursed Cain so badly? Why is his punishment so high? Even Cain himself screamed and said, God, this punishment is too much for me. Do you know how far God goes to secure the soul of a believer so that he doesn't go to eternal damnation? You know how much. Sometimes God sends his servants to walk miles, travel miles, travel from one country to the other just to give a message to a single soul. That is how far God can go. Listen, this word that Jesus Christ says here, John 6, 37 following, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Do you think that Jesus Christ cast his own out? Do you think that Jesus Christ is erratic and that he is easily angered? If you just do something, he said, no, you are no longer my child. I cast you out. That is not the case. God is a merciful God. He bears long with our weaknesses. Please, I recommend this message to you, the revelation of God's grace, 150 years in hell, and the revelation of God's grace. 150 years in hell, and the revelation of God's grace. God bears so long with us. God is not easily angered. He doesn't just cast us out. God bears so long. Anytime we sin and we acknowledge our sins and confess to Him, He forgives. He freely forgives. As a father pities, pities his children, so He pities us. Do you know that before Cain killed Abel, God actually came down and talked with Cain. Let's look at the Bible. Genesis chapter 4, verses 5, 6, and 7. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wrath. So after God accepted the sacrifice of Abel, he did not accept the sacrifice of Cain. First of all, because they were offered from a wicked heart. So if you look at it, God did not accept the person of Cain first. And he did not also accept the sacrifice of Cain. A lot of us who are preachers, if I may just digress a little bit, a lot of us who are preachers and pastors, receives offerings from different people. Even when we know these people are scammers, these people have... I, I know a man, maybe he may be dead now, who had a brutal, and he was paying tight to the offering. He had a brutal, they were prostitutes living there. This is someone who should be expelled from the church. But because he had money, nobody expelled him. God had no respect for Cain and his offering. And because of that, Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, so Cain had this access to hear from God. Cain could hear from God. God spoke to Cain. God warned him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrath? You see the extent God could go. God saw the heart of Cain that Cain was angry and God had to speak to him. He warned him. Why are you angry? And why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? 
Some of us think that God is an angry God and he just picks people because they are sinners and casts them into hell. Let me tell you, God has his own plan for every single human being in the world. For those of us who are in Christ, he does everything possible to protect us. Sometimes God makes provision for us when he knows that if we do not have provision, maybe financial provision, maybe protection, we could fall into temptation and get lost. He provides for us. A lot of times when we receive things from God, it is not because we merit them. But those blessings we receive could be as a result of security. They act as security. You know, the Bible says money is a defense. So that when we are secured, when we receive those blessings and we are secured, we don't fall for the enticement of the devil. But what do some people do sometimes? As soon as they receive those blessings, their hearts become swollen. Their head becomes stubborn. They become strong-headed. And decide to do anything they like with the money, with the financial blessings, with the provision that God has given to them. God warned Cain. Let's go back to the scripture. Verse 7. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sing. Lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You better master him now. Sin lies at the door, ready to take you away from me. This is how far God can go in securing the soul of the believer. He saw the heart of Cain. As a matter of fact, God did not do this when Adam and Eve sinned against him. He did not come down and speak to Abraham uh, to Adam. He did not speak like this that if hey stop don't take it he already given his commandment and he expected them to obey but they did not let me read another translation verse 7 genesis 6, 4 7 if you do what is right will you not be accepted but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Look at the warning God gave to Cain. This is the extent God can go in securing our souls. God saw that my, the heart of my son is swollen with anger. I have to go and warn him immediately. God warned Cain. Stop it. You are about falling. Don't go. Do you know that sometimes. When we plan to fall. Or when God sees that we are about falling. He uses different means to speak to us. Different ways to talk to us. To warn us. So that we don't backslide. He uses different means. Just to talk to us. Just to warn us. But. The heart of man. Is evil. The heart of man is wicked. God goes to land. To secure our souls. What did Cain do? After. He. Had this warning from God. 
Verse 8 says, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. Cain got up after hearing from God. He did not use the word. He never took heed to the warning. He got up from there. And the next thing he did was to deceive his brother. You see why God was so angry to the point of cursing man directly. He cursed Cain. Because all the effort God put into securing the soul of Cain. Cain downtrodded everything. Cain refused to make use of it. He broke down all the security fence that God put around him to make sure that he did not fall. Let me ask you this question. Do you know that a lot of times God goes to length, including making sure that he provides his angels, speaking to you through dreams, through revelations, sending prophets, sending warnings, sending people. I remember a woman, a rich woman, came to me one day in the office. I was the, then I was the administrator of St. Andrew's Hospital. She came to me in the office and she told me that, my son, I know you can tell me the truth. I know my life is in danger. This is a dream I had. And I don't just want to meet just anybody because they may not tell me the truth. I know my life is in danger and this is the dream I have. Could you please tell me the truth? I told her, I said, God revealed the meaning of the dream to me and I told her, I don't want to go into much details, but the time I told her that your sins are about gathering. It's time for God to pay you back. This dream is a warning to you. Do you know that this woman broke down, started crying. She was weeping. She was weeping. I told her you have to repent. Brethren, do you remember Nebuchadnezzar? The warning he got. Yet he did not change until God took away his human heart and gave him the heart of an animal and he ate grasses like ox. <laughs> if he had obeyed, he wouldn't have suffered all those years eating grasses like an animal. So Cain, even after God warned him, he did not listen. This is how far God goes to secure our souls. Do you know that God does not sleep? He does not slumber. He watches over us every time. God goes to great lengths. And I tell you, there is no limit to which God can go. Let's even talk about some things. Do you know that how much you protect something has to do with the level of value you accrue to that particular thing? How much value does God actually attach to our souls? Because that will determine directly how much God can go, how far he can go to protect us, to secure our souls. Remember the topic, we're talking about how far God goes to secure our souls. What actually happened in the beginning? What happened? 
in the beginning, God had a plan. And the plan of God, God have to know that man would fall. Oh, a lot of people think that God never knew that man would fall. Even before the foundation of the world was laid, God knew everything. Oh, if I know, I'm not trying to throw you into confusion, because a lot of you may think that, oh, he's trying to confuse us. No, I'm not trying to confuse you. God knows the end from the beginning. Oh, so you think that even before God created Lucifer, he never knew that Lucifer would rebel against him. God is the fountain of wisdom. God is the fountain of knowledge. His, the depth of the knowledge and wisdom of God is unfathomable. You can't fathom it. You can't dig it all out. Imagine a human being that God created. Over 6,000 years, we have been trying to study ordinary human beings. And we have not been able to finish the study. Man got created maybe with few minutes, if probably less than a minute. We don't know. We have been trying to study natural cardiologists who specialize in studying just the human heart. We have hematologists, people who just try to study the blood. We have people who a gynecologist, just the study of women alone. We have pediatrists, those who study children, who treat children ailments. We have been trying to, what about those, just the eyes alone? People who study just this small organ. For thousands of years, we haven't finished the studies. <laughs> God is the fountain of wisdom and knowledge. We don't even know everything about ourselves. So why do you think that we are logical enough to fault God? You can't fault him. Because you, before you can judge someone, before you can subject someone to the capacity of your own judgment, I mean your own wisdom, and judge the person, you have to be really fortified with knowledge. You have to be knowledgeable enough. How can you subject someone to your own judgment and wisdom if the person is wiser than you, if the person is knowledgeable than you if you are not up to one one third or one tenth of his wisdom what we need as humans is knowledge we should learn from him and not judge him how many times have we judged the ways of god and try to find fault with the Almighty. God knew that Lucifer would betray him even before he was created. And you're going to ask me, why did God do that? Well, I'll give you the straight answer right now. The answer I'm giving you, all you may say, Oh, why did God create human beings if he knows that human beings are going to fall? These are questions I've asked before. Oh, why would God even uh, send Jesus to die if he knows that the heart of man will be wicked and that majority of humans won't even uh, listen? Let me give you the answer to all these questions. The best answer I can give you we strive to enter heaven. When we get there, we will ask all these questions. 
Because so long as we live in this human tent called the body, the human body, there are things we will never be permitted to get answers to. Yes! We will be schooled in heaven. When we get to heaven, there are knowledge we will download automatically. And there are things we will be taught by the great teacher himself. Reserve all your questions. Le don't let your questions lead to faithlessness. Don't allow your questions to land you in the pit of unfaithfulness. But the fact that you do not know everything, that fact should humble you, should make you to be humble enough to learn and to enter eternity so that you can get the whole knowledge and clear your confusion. Let us at this moment limit ourselves to the knowledge of the Bible and the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Let's limit ourselves to the amount of light that is shone upon the Word of God. So that when we live here, we will be bold enough, we will be inquisitive enough to ask God to explain to us, to ask the angels of God, the church fathers who have made it to tell us the things we do not know. When we lie at the bosom of Abraham, we will be taught in love the things that we do not know. For now, let us strive to enter. God had his own plan. And the plan of God right from the beginning is to give Jesus Christ for our salvation. So Jesus was, had been slain from the foundation of the world. Now I want us to understand how much God values the human soul. And how much sacrifices God has already made for the salvation of the human soul? Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 says that Jesus Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. That is the depth and the weight of God's plans for our salvation. God knew that this is what is going to happen. But in his own wisdom, he laid the foundation of the world, created man, created Lucifer before he created this existing planet. Satan is older than Genesis chapter 2. Satan is older. He is older than in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was, with, was without form and void. Satan is older than that. Satan had been created before the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the earth. And God spoke and said, let there be light and was light. Satan is older than that. The weight of God for man's salvation is heavy. Now, how much does God value the human soul? What is the value of the human soul? The value is that if you place the whole world on one side of the scale and you place you, a human being, on the other side of the scale, 
a single soul is heavier than everything in the world. Matthew 16, 26, For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? This is God's own value of the human soul. God values the human soul so much. A lot of us do not know our value. And that is why we even question why would God come in human form, put on human flesh and die? That is why a lot of us do not know the weight of the sacrifice of the death of Jesus Christ. I will try to round off this message and continue next time. But I just want us to know that the human soul is so heavy, is so costly to God and because of that, for God to save the human being, God had to send his only begotten son the person of Jesus Christ, who is the second person in the triune God to come and die for us. And when John saw Jesus Christ, look at John 1.29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. This is how far God goes to secure the human soul. Not with the blood of lamb, not with the blood of rams and goats and bulls and cattle, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The salvation of man is sealed with the blood of the Lamb of God. Is sealed with the blood of God himself. That is how far God goes to secure the human soul. God goes to lengths to secure the human soul. God doesn't joke with the human soul. If God can Give us Jesus Christ to die for us. How much more with him give us all things? Are you in trouble? Are you giving up? Do you feel that God doesn't love you much? God loves you. Jesus loves you. And he goes to lands to protect you. Do you know how many battles God fights for you? Do you know how many things God delivers you from? Because he doesn't want you to end up in disgrace and in destruction. Do you think that God brings the gospel to you, makes you say the sinner's prayer and then get baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and says, okay, you can go and fight for yourself. Go and hustle your way out. No. There were lots of provision. There are depths and heights and lengths. God goes for you just to secure your soul. Next week, we're going to continue from here. Please make sure you follow up this message. We are going to look at different depths. We are going to look at different heights. We are going to look at how far God goes to secure the human soul. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, our King, because we know you are in charge. This is a serious business you have embarked on. 
And we know that all those that has been marked out for salvation, you will secure them. You go to lands. Even after they are dead and gone, you don't forget. You said in your word, I have engraven you on the palms of my hands. Your words are ever before me. You engrave us, not write. You engrave us. To engrave is to dig and make inscription. To dig with a sharp object. We are engraven on the palms of your hands. Lord, open our eyes to see. Open the eyes of our hearts to see and comprehend the depth of the security of the believer. Open our eyes, O oh Lord God. Help us to understand. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done. Lord, I pray for as many who are in trouble, who are facing one challenge or the other. Father, please fight for them. May the power of the Lord fight for you. May the Spirit of the Lord see you through. May the glory of the Lord envelop you. May shame and disgrace not be your portion. The fact that you have come to believe in Christ, may the power of the Lord see you through. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against every work of darkness in your life. I shatter every chain. I destroy every power. I destroy every work of darkness against your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be well with you. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, mighty God. I pray for as many who have been supported this ministry. I pray for as many who are pillars in their local churches, supporting the work of God in one way or the other. May the Lord God Almighty accept your sweet-smelling sacrifices. May the Lord God Almighty build you up in the most holy faith, secure you until you enter that kingdom. May the Lord God Almighty help you above your personal weaknesses, above your human weaknesses, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you be helped enough to enter the kingdom. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. It's my prayer that Lord God Almighty will continue to expand on this words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Please share this video and subscribe to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. Our contact details are in the description box and our, on our website, tnwcfan.org. If you have any question or you need spiritual support feel free to contact me and please share this video with someone if you want to support our ministry kindly support our ministry our details account details are on the screen we now have a paper you feel free to support us and the good lord almighty will bless you in jesus name see you next week god bless you bye bye